Next, if you take vitamins and supplements, you may be even more excited about this panel. Very interesting panel. In our next panel, we're going to discuss, uh, watch our industry experts talk about the dietary supplements, how they're affecting the healthcare industry as a whole. I would now like to request our session moderator, Mr. Dallin Larson, to take the proceedings ahead. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, on the panel this afternoon, we've lost, I think, a couple of people, but uh, Susan Gibson, if you'd come up, please, and, uh, and Aaron Stapleton, Dr. Saif Shadari from uh, Saudi Arabia, perhaps the furthest uh, uh, travel to be here, and Amanda Garrison, the panelists. As the panelists are making their way in, let me just, uh, I'll take just a couple minutes. First of all, I want to thank IFA uh, for organizing this conference. I don't have any numbers, uh, any letters at the end of my name, so sometimes I've been wondering why I'm here. Um, very impressive uh, group of people and, and the things that I've learned. Um, I've been in, in nutrition for 30 years, and um, helped create a couple, glo couple global companies. Um, I enjoyed the presenta presentation this morning on joy uh, and the difference between happiness and joy and the quote about service brings joy. That's been my life experience as well. Next week I celebrate my 60th birthday and sometimes I say, how did I get here? Life goes fast. My dad used to always say, the older I get, the faster the ride and that's been my experience. I'm a guy who barely graduated from high school. I was slugged in the face by my high school principal, told I would never graduate, and went on to become the CEO of the year in the state of Utah and the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year in America. Um, the power of a dream, the power of, uh, of purpose, and the power of vision. My wife is standing back here, Carrie. She is one of the most fit 50-year-olds on the planet, and she would take me down in about two minutes. So I say yes, dear, all morning, afternoon, and evening. Um, when she was in her early 20s, she held a child in her arms and had to make the choice whether to pull the plug because of spinal meningitis. Uh, she's a strong woman. I've seen opioids up close and personal with a son who tore an ACL, who went to a physician, and not all physicians are created equal. I believe they, they all have good intention and I realized the, uh, the little amount of time they have with each patient. This particular doctor gave my son 30 tablets and said, when you feel pain, take another tablet. And um, that led to uh, Oxycontin, which led to uh, heroin and cocaine. And I saw many of his friends uh, overdose. And by the grace of God, he's still here today 10 years later and is just writing a book. I just flew back from Greece a few days ago and read his book about um, opioid addiction and how he overcame it. So I'm grateful to be in uh, the industry that I'm in. I'm passionate about wellness and health. I'm grateful for physicians. I understand the need for drugs. And I also believe strongly in taking a proactive approach to health. And that's why I'm in the industry that I'm in. Two years ago, my wife and I, about four years ago, we retired. And I was playing golf every day, and I realized I wasn't doing anything to, to help anybody except for myself. Was I happy? Yes. Was I joyful? Probably not. So we came out of retirement to start a third and final company. I've been fortunate to, to, to create companies that have generated billions of dollars in revenue around the globe, helped a lot of people physically and financially. We have chosen the direct sales channel to distribute products over 30 years. We came out of retirement two years ago to hopefully bless a million people. We have a nonprofit in Africa drilling wells. Our company, Viseo, is two years old now. We've drilled 60 wells in Tanzania. Y'all ought to know that in 2019, we still can't get fresh water around the globe. It's crazy. Over 2,000 children in Africa die every day under the age of five from waterborne disease. So we started our company because 
we decided it's we the people. We can't wait on the government to solve all the ills of the world. And that's why you're in this room. You're a group of people who are doing, doing good in your own professions. So I'm grateful to be involved in the wellness industry. Um, nutrition is an interesting topic, isn't it? A lot of doctors don't, you know, I would say a lot of doctors don't necessarily believe uh, strongly in supplements. Uh, it seems like there's kind of this ongoing war or whatever. I believe that there's a need for both. The proactive side with, with nutritional supplements as well as, as, as physicians and what they do. In 1994, in the state that I now reside in, Orrin Hatch, the senator at the time, introduced legislation for the Deshaies Act, the Dietary Supplement and Health Education Act. It's now been 25 years since that act passed, Congre uh, passed the Senate. Uh, 25 years. It's a pretty loosely regulated uh, industry. Uh, supplements, there's good actors and bad actors, like there is in every industry. But it's interesting, it's been 25 years, and at the time, the dietary supplement uh, industry was a $4 billion industry. 25 years later, now it's a $40 billion industry. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of revenue, just in the United States. I've operated companies where we've gone into 20 countries, and it's interesting, the different regulatory bodies around the world and how they look at every nutrient. What's acceptable in the United States, you ought to know, is it's a lot more loose in the United States, some ingredients. Uh, for example, I can have melatonin in my sleep product here. You can't get that in Canada. You can't get that in Thailand. You can't get that in Indonesia and in other markets in Asia and around the world. So it's a pretty fascinating space. Um, I, I want to introduce, I want to give the microphone to each of our four panelists. They can explain to you why they would have been put on this panel and um, a little bit about themselves, and we'll, uh, we'll ask a few questions of the panelists, and then if time permits, we'll open it up to the audience. First, Susan Gibson. Thanks so much, Dallin. I am Susan Gibson. I am the president and CEO of Vivalor Therapeutics, the creator of Glory Day Brain Booster. By training, I'm a pharmacist and MBA with 30 years experience in the pharmaceutical and medical device industry developing products. But my mother has dementia, and so I developed a passion for solving dementia and Alzheimer's and addressing brain health. So I left the corporate world and started Vivalor and launched Glory Day Brain Booster, which is the most powerful brain supplement on the market, has five to 20 times the level of supplementation of other supplements. And I don't know how many of you have been impacted by dementia and Alzheimer's. It's a terrible disease. It's a terrible disease and possibly even harder on the caregiver than it is on the individual. Of course, this is a supplement. I think we'll probably talk a little bit about regulation. So it is indicated as for brain health only. It is not indicated to treat any disease. I do plan to do studies in dementia and Alzheimer's as well though, because I believe it will actually reduce the dementia and Alzheimer's. But again, it's not currently indicated for that, but that's the plan for where I hope to go. Hoping to help millions of people and prevention is the best solution. The best solution to dementia is not to get it. And you actually have many decades that the pathology is developing. So there is time to intervene. Our company is also, also socially responsible, kind of like Dallin's company. We're giving 51% of corporate profits to help the poor and needy. So we're trying to help both the primarily elderly and um, prevent the development of dementia and help those in need as well. Thank you, Susan. That's so impressive. 51% of profits. That's, a, that's very impressive. Amanda, or let's see, let's go now to Amanda Garrison from the great state of Missouri, the Show Me State. Amanda. I am Amanda Lucas Garrison. Amanda Lucas, Lucas Garrison. That's okay. I'm also choose the heel. Tease your heel. <laughs> so, is, this um, a new, is this another dog app? Choose no. the heel? Oh, when I ahead. was doing a presentation, I was announced as choose your heel instead of choose your health. It was Got it. quite humorous. Um, so I am an, an integrative wellness um, manager. Um, I have, my whole life has been somewhat creative and experiences I've too dealt with opiate. I, I, take, I have taken people out of the healthcare system on, system on dementia um, just to help ha get them set to and work with their physicians at a, to have a quality life. But 
my outside of the support, which is huge, I do focus on, which wasn't mentioned, um, functional food, okay? So in the, in the ninth Industrial Revolution is when we started, hi, this is how you eat, it's easy, it's convenient. And we have a market of processed foods. And when you have the processed foods, what deficiencies do we have? Minerals, vitamin D, omega-3, what, what basically processed foods are. They take something, they heat it up, they reform it, sell it at a lower cost, and it's easy to cook. Understandably, the motive was good, but it hasn't been healthy, okay? So I work, um, and functional food is, can be termed with, as a supplement, uh, like nutraceuticals, but I like to, I'm not anti-supplements, but often people take supplements and the magnesium isn't chelated, which means it's not able to break down in your stomach. Um, some people are all of a sudden having digestive distress and it may be contributed to their supplements. So I help them build a plan, hopefully first by foods, but if they can't break food down, and especially if you're older, you don't use it. I mean, think of us, if we sit more, we're sore. We, we don't use it, we lose it. It's the same way with our digestive system. We stop producing um, enzymes. And so how can we introduce probiotics? We have all these new probiotics that came out. Well, we can get probiotics through food. We can get enzymes through food. So I help with people with that. Um, yeah. Very good. OK, let's, uh, let's now turn to Aaron Stapleton. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Aaron Stapleton. I am uh, on the board of the Alzheimer's Association and also uh, founded Queen City Home Care, uh, Home Care Company in Ohio. After listening to the last presentation, if anybody's interested in owning a home care company, I apparently need to sell it. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, I, I started my home care company because I saw a need for a, a different level of care. Uh, the industry is known for uh, sitters and, and just allowing people to um, do their own thing and not have interaction. And, and therefore, um, one of our goals was to bring on and have uh, nurses and, and licensed independent social workers look at the... Um, drug lists that our individuals were on, especially those that have uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, and try and uh, decrease those as much as possible and, and utilize healthy eating habits, uh, supplements, instead of uh, just psychotropic drugs that pretty much put you in a corner and, and uh, don't let you live out the best days of your life. So um, I think the reason that, that I'm on this panel is because uh, our goal is, is really to make sure that we're not over-medicating our seniors uh, and that we're doing everything possible to give them the best days that they can, that they can have. Fantastic. Let's uh, pass the microphone to Dr. Saif Shadari. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Tell the audience a little about your background and Yes, uh, I'm uh, Dr. Saif Shudari. I'm from Saudi Arabia. Uh, I'm the CEO of um, Saudi German Hospital in Riyadh. That's a, uh, that's a private company. And uh, it's a branch that's in Riyadh. We're having more than about uh, I mean, 15 branches all over the, uh, in the Middle East. Um, uh, <clears throat> in the same time, basically, I'm a gynecologist. Um, I have worked for, um, uh, been as a gynecologist for 15 years after that. I have moved to the, to the quality business. I had my uh, MPH from um, uh, Oklahoma University. And then I came back to, to see that there was a lot of uh, lack in quality issues in our hospitals. So I, um, I led the, uh, I mean the team there. And uh, the hospital that I was working on, it, it was about uh, uh, 2,000 beds hospital. Um, and um, it was about three hospitals, the surgical, medical and uh, ob and pediatrics. Um, there, what I, uh, what I saw that, I mean, the lack of, uh, of this quality issues was hampering a lot of things that, is, that, that should be done properly in the healthcare itself. And then we worked about, uh, I mean, uh, thinking about the hospital to be accredited by, uh, by international levels and also, um, so uh, we have worked for the JCA accreditation and then after that, um, uh, there was a local uh, I mean, um, accreditation body that's called Sibahi, a Central Board of Accreditation there. And we achieved to have this, uh, this accreditation process 
that is actually a very long process and I'm feeling very proud of it that after being working continuously for five to six years, our hospital have been accredited. Um, and it was one of the, um, the oldest hospital in the kingdom. Um, uh, the, the, the reason that I'm here now uh, in this panel is uh, uh, being a gynecologist and at the same time uh, working on the quality issue, um, uh, we want to improve the, the, the quality of life in Saudi Arabia. And most of the, of, of, the, of the threatening issue that now is happening in Saudi Arabia is the obesity issue. And the obesity is, this is the one that's, uh, um, because of the food that my colleague was, was talking about, that the, the type of food and all of the things that are, um, that's happening there without, with lack of, of, uh, of exercise and lack of, you know, regarding the, 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 the climate that's there, it's very much, I mean, avoidable. I mean, just you can't, you can't have your exercises properly in the open air all the time in the, uh, I mean, um, in the year. So that's why uh, there is a lack of exercise and the community is not that much educated to be. Uh, but nowadays, even though the government, they are putting their all pressure to, I mean, to make the community to understand that's how the quality of life it should be by the exercise itself. And at the same time, to decrease the, I mean, um, I mean, um, uh, the farmed food that, I mean, that they are taking the fast food that, I mean, that's, that's going over there and that should be taken care of. So uh, all those things, it comes in the quality of life and the same that how you can uh, prevent those things and making life much better. Excellent. You know, I'm just, uh, for the doctor, you know, I just, just got back from Europe for a month. All over the world I go, it seems like America is exporting its uh, nutrient uh, void fast food chains all over the world. Is Saudi uh, Arabia also uh, have, have we given you this blessing of the American uh, fast food over there now? Pardon me? Do we have American fast food in Saudi Arabia? I mean, I mean McDonald's is, is, is all over the world right. there. McDonald's, Burger King, and you name it. Uh, I mean, Kentucky chickens and, uh, you know, uh, all those burgers and, uh, I mean, it's there. And actually, you know that, I mean, uh, it's a very popular, uh, I mean, um, uh, food chains. And kids especially, you can find that now we are having a lot of kids that are, I mean, aging between 8 to 12. They are very much fat. And that's a very alarming system, mm, yeah. an alarming issue that you should, you should tell them that, but they are not listening to it. Right. I mean, I mean I'm talking about my kids. I mean, that, you know, I mean, um, I'm having four kids at home. But they're not kids now. Uh, I mean, uh, they're I mean, they're men. I'm having my my, my first son. He's uh, 29, and uh, the second son is 28. The third is 21, and the fourth is 16. The 16 one is the one who is taking care of his health now, uh, properly, and I, I'm feeling very good after, out of him. But the rest of them, they are feeling that no, we want to go and buy food from outside, even though I mean, uh, I mean, the food is is prepared yep. at home. With, 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 uh, with, with good quantity of, you know, less fat and all those things, but they're not liking it. Well, last week I was in Athens, and uh, extremely good baklava, and Greek salads, and there was a KFC, and, and there was a lot more people in KFC than there were and, eating and nobody's uh, there. the Greek <laughs> salad. So I think the, the, the epidemic that we're in around the world for, of obesity and other um, health challenges, largely because of the lack of exercise, uh, and what we're putting in our mouths and, and the type of calories that we're consuming and we're spending our time on our phones Twittering and texting instead of moving our bodies. So all of those things have had an effect and it's a global crisis, I think. And you, so can, and you can see that one of the things that now a very good business that's going on there, there's a sleeve gastrectomy. Is what? Sleeve gastrectomy. What is it? Obesity treatment. That's, that's, oh. That means you have to remove, yeah. uh, remove a part of your, of right, your stomach just to, I mean, I mean, to decrease your weight. And that's a, I mean, I mean, that's a very good business there for the surgeons who are doing it because a, a, a number of, uh, of the people who are obese. So it seems like, like everything else in life, let's take the easy way and have that surgery. We can eat as much as we want and drink as much as we want and smoke as much as we want for as long as we want. And we'll go to a doctor and that doctor will cure it all. Amanda, it looked like you wanted to make a comment. Yes, I just returned from Peru, and um, I challenge everybody that has not left the United States to do so sometime in your life, and not just go to Italy or um, Brazil or London, because Peru has 
an abundance of fruits and vegetables. Citrus fruits, foods that we buy, we have, we export, and we have from California, and we have, a, we have all these regulations, understandably, because it's been abused, but they're not even cooking the fruits and vegetables. So fresh. So they don't have recipes, they don't know, they're busy, and also we're looking at a safety issue. So when, we, when they eat here, they, they eat a meal, so we put it in the refrigerator. If an egg sits out for one day, we are so afraid of some kind of disease. We have this fear planted in our head, right? Because we were trained. So I'm not blaming myself, you, or even them, is that they will leave eggs out all the time. They put their meal, they eat their meals, chicken, rice, whatever time they come home, because in parts of Peru, they, they drive moto cars. There are vehicles. You don't roll down the windows and get fresh, fresh air, especially Lima and other areas. Now you go to Machu Picchu and some other places, what we hear of, but it's, there are, we have a robust amount of food and we are not using it. Why are we not, okay? So because of the Industrial Revolution, because we're busy, we're stressed, we have, we're dealing with legitimate problems, not just a chronic, but acute and um, emergency care, dementia, is that we need to somehow stop and educate people how to cook, use what we have, um, change how the costs are of food, because obesity is huge. We, oh, I don't know, and irrelevant to your political piece, but Michelle Obama started an ob obesity action a few years back. And when she did so, I, the group of people I, were, I was with, they're like, well, she's fat, she shouldn't be talking. So, because they were basing it on a BMI. So they were, so instead of looking at what she was thinking about with statistics and the health and true supplementation, there are people in other countries that do need supplementation because they don't have the food that's ready available, which is where functional food with the supplementation is important because they don't even have it available to live. We have that. So that's just going to make that. Excellent. Um, I want to spend a couple minutes talking about evidence of, of effectiveness of nutrition. After, after I retired, when, for me to come back in uh, to this space, uh, we started using a new tech, I mean, a technology that the big farmers use for a long time using liposomes. Um, and I think it's pretty revolutionary in nutritional supplements where we're putting different nutrients inside of a fat bubble called a liposome to increase absorption. I think that's one of the reasons why doctors haven't gotten behind uh, to largely dietary supplements because they just say there's expensive urine. You know, we've all heard that. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. Um, some of the molecules are so large that they're just not absorbed. Um, so I think we need to be looking at new technologies to make sure that we provide a great product for people. Yes, we need to exercise. Yes, we need to say no to fast food, and it's easier to say that than not. Yes, we need to move our bodies. Um, but I absolutely believe there's a place for, uh, for functional foods and dietary supplements uh, as long as they work. And like I said, there's good and bad actors. I, I, I'm excited about trying Susan's product for the brain. Why don't you, speaking of the brain and brain health, I mean, certainly you and Aaron both had a lot of experience in the Alzheimer's and dementia area. Do you have any evidence? Can you show forth any evidence that, um, that using dietary supplements has been uh, effective? Because we talked yesterday about the cost of drugs and, and the billions of dollars uh, sometimes it takes to get FDA approval on a product. So they want to make their return. Unfortunately, it seems like life is always about following the money. Um, prevention is a lot, lot less expensive than, than the alternative, in my belief. And that's, that's another reason why I'm in this space. But if someone can take a brain product that's natural and get solid results over spending X amount of money on a particular drug, can you show forth, you or Aaron, both of you maybe speak to this for a couple of minutes on that particular disease condition. I know that, I mean, the FDA has said you can't treat, cure, mitigate disease with dietary supplements. So, you know, make, not making any claims here on the panel, but I think here, for the purpose of this, you could talk about that and what kind of results you're seeing with nutritional supplements, dietary supplements, or functional foods in the area of treating that particular condition, since that's where your, level, your area of expertise is. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd love to set the stage a little bit with the seriousness of dementia and Alzheimer's in general, because 
it's a national health crisis. I mean, with the aging of the population, we're gonna have more than three times as many people with dementia and Alzheimer's by 2050 as we have today. And at 85 years and older, half of people are diagnosed with dementia. So if you make it to that age, if you're not the person who has dementia, you will likely be a caregiver for a person with dementia. And currently there is nothing that addresses the underlying disease. It's the only disease in the top 10 most common causes of death in the United States that has nothing to currently to address its progression. There are a couple of pharmaceuticals that are approved. And one thing you had mentioned, physicians and their perspectives, I think part of the challenge, I mean, I'm classically trained in Western traditional medicine and have moved to Eastern natural medicine. And I think by and large, our traditional medical training is more in handling acute diseases and serious situations after they happen. So it is primarily a focus on the diagnosis and treatment of disease. And I think that's just the way our healthcare has progressed in the United States. But prevention is the uh, holy grail and by far the best approach. So in terms of Glory Day Brain Booster, I have on my website a summarization of the scientific literature on each of the ingredients. There is more and more literature supporting the different supplements over time. It is not the same quality of research that you have with a pharmaceutical, but there are placebo-controlled human trials, and I have summarized those on the product. Two of the ingredients in Glory Day Brain Booster actually reverse dementia and Alzheimer's in over 100 patients. This is anecdotal, it was not in a clinical trial, but reversing dementia and Alzheimer's How do you measure that? pretty unheard of. Well, they were dramatic changes in life. They were people who were able to go back to work, who weren't able to work. So what I was the sample size? If there was a hundred, you said there was over 100, out of how many, what was the sample size? It, it was over 100 patients who had taken the, the product. So there was the, a, the two, the you, gave, you gave the product to 100 people and what percentage did you see improvement in? You know? so, so this this is two of the ingredients. This is the, so Glory oh, okay. Day Brain Booster is new. That particular so ingredient. Th those those two ingredients being used, which are two of the nine ingredients in the Glory Day Brain Booster, but that was part of what gave the initial evidence to create the product with adding additional ingredients that each have evidence of their improvements in cognition in the scientific literature. I do have um, one patient who has had serious cognitive deficits for 10 years and diagnosed Alzheimer's for five years who was on the product for only three days and he was speaking only a few words. He was totally sedentary, um, getting agitated and aggressive. They had taken his dog away because he kept restraining the dog. He could not go to the bathroom by himself, did not remember his wife's name. He started calling his wife by name after three days on the product. He's only been on the product for three weeks now. Um, he started speaking sentences within a few days. They weren't coherent yet, but over time, more and more of his sentences are coherent. He can go to the bathroom by himself now. They've given him his dog back because he's, he's just more engaged, more social. That is a reversal mm -hmm. because you, You're seeing you some continue to decline. Even with the currently approved pharmaceuticals, cognitive performance continues to decline. It just declines at a slightly lower rate for a period of time, but to reverse back to a level of functioning that you had previously been, that, that is unprecedented. Right. So we're still early in the process. Yes. But I'm gonna add to that. So a big part of dementia, dementia is a broad term. So if any of you have worked in elderly care, specifically in mental health, dementia can be a broad term that's used by psychiatric understandably physicians that they don't know. And there is not a specific, there are tasks where people exhibit Alzheimer's and dementia, but they don't have any longitudinal objective data to say, hey, so a lot of data that's moving forward is, is going to be, I, I believe, and there's someone to be speaking on dementia, it's gonna be subjective data starting with some certain brain tests from the, from the family members and dementia. Right. 
because dementia can be Lewy bodies. It could be, it's a broad term, just kind of like if someone dies. So, right. so it's hard, that's a great question. And that's where people get stumped because just like total health, it's not always one thing that causes Never it, one thing. Unless it's meningitis or something like that. Mm, yeah. There are pieces to that. Aaron, you've sh share your experience working with your patients, maybe in this area. Yeah, what, um, what you've seen work or any advice you'd have. Sure, sure. So I think uh, one of the common misconceptions about Alzheimer's and dementia is that it's an old person's disease. Um, it, we're seeing more and more uh, individuals under 65 being diagnosed, and um, the youngest client that we've had was uh, 48. She was diagnosed when she was 44, and actually I just got off the phone uh, earlier this morning with somebody who had uh, vascular dementia that is 36, and she's had it for uh, 12 years. Um, so it's, it's not just a, a young person's disease, right? Um, but I think what, what I can speak to is, is really the quality of life. It's more, uh, I can't say that, hey, whenever we get somebody off of a psychotropic drug and put them on a supplement or you know, uh, change their eating habits that they're going to live longer. Um, unfortunately, with this disease, you can live um, you know, five, seven, 10 years with it, uh, obviously 12 uh, with, with the vascular dementia with this individual who, had, uh, who, who has Down syndrome. Um, but what I can talk to is quality of life. And, and I think everybody in here can agree that whether you live to 70, 80, 90, 100, uh, you don't want the last years of your life to be, uh, you know, sitting in a chair and, and not having any uh, influence on society or, or being able to choose the pants that you wear that day. So um, I, I think one of the things that we've seen is the ability to uh, thrive and have really the what I would consider to be the best days uh, of their lives, being able to still go out and be a part of society, still interact with individuals um, that you don't see with those, those drugs uh, all the time. Excellent. Well, I guess we've got only about five more minutes left, but anybody have any questions you'd like to ask on this topic? I'd, I'd reiterate again, as far as the United States, I mean, we're pretty fortunate. I, I consider ourselves very fortunate that we can use about, there's a lot of nutrients we can use here in our dietary supplements you can't use other places around the world. Right over here. Does Parkinson's fall into this category? Yes, Parkinson's has a complication, a dementia complication that's called Lewy body dementia. So as, um, as was mentioned, there's a variety of different types of dementia, frontotemporal dementia, vascular dementia, and Lewy body dementia is, um, is the dementia that's classically associated with Parkinson's. I is that what you meant? Yes. Anybody else? One more. As, um, as the lead engineer for PET-CT uh, several years ago, <clears throat> yeah, one of our biggest concerns was the amyloid plaque buildup, right? And so now, of course, we can definitively look at the brain and say, yes, you have. Alzheimer's. Um, there's zero neuron f firing, and it, it, you know it's. But I'd, I'd be interested to see if you're going to do some long-term trials, uh, a before and after PET CT of the brain of using your your uh, you know your nutraceutical, and uh, from there you know and and also being a a large investor in in <laughs> in uh, healthcare companies, uh, it'd be interesting to see what uh, what your results are from a PET CT perspective. Yeah, um, great comment. So imaging of the brain is absolutely something that could be done. I haven't designed the trials yet, but imaging could even uh, show more short-term impact. I think maybe we should talk offline, but I think the imaging is somewhat interesting in that absolutely beta amyloid plaques are one of the classic indicators. They appear 15 to 20 years before the first memory loss symptoms. Um, there are controversial opinions as to the role of the beta amyloid plaques in the actual pro progression of the disease. And Dr. Dale Bredesen believes that they're actually the body's protective response, selecting certain neurons to survive and certain others not to. 
So it is intriguing to me that some people, I don't know if you know the NUN study, but some people actually have substantive beta amyloid plaque, and the one, uh, some of the nuns were over 100 years old and still did not present any clinical symptoms. So I am primarily going to use cognition. I mean, this is a very interesting and complex area because the diagnosis of Alzheimer's does not have objective criteria to diagnose it other than the actual cognitive decline and the imaging. So um, it's something I'm considering. Would love to talk to you more. All right, thank you all and thank you to the panelists. Very interesting indeed. Thank you so much for that, guys.